All right, happy Friday. Welcome back to the shop. Welcome back to the Two Stroke Turbo channel where we work on weird vehicles. This is an odd duck in more than one way. This is a 1977 Pinsgauer 410, something like that. It's a Swiss made or Austrian made. I can't remember. It's a Pinsgauer. It has a three liter four cylinder engine. And I'm going to talk about this thing a little bit. You guys have seen it before on my channel. It's been hanging around here for a while. So this is our air cooled. Air goes in here. That's the cooling air. Uh, the engine kind of lays on its side a little bit. You can see the valve covers there. There's four independent valve covers. It has dual carburetors, same as that would be on like a Porsche 356. They're Zenus. They're actually pretty good carburetors. They... This vehicle is stored on the Oregon coast and it's had a lot of rust and water problems like rust getting into electrical components, rust getting in the body and water because the coast is very, very moist. Let me open the door here and I'll show you a couple things. Uh, one thing, the fan had sucked in a bunch of debris, leaves and litter and it was plugging the tops of the cylinders. It was awful. And when it did that, something got that fan pulls in quite a bit of air it's like a porsche fan but similar but not quite the same um, to cool the engine it pulls in a tremendous amount of air it also can pull in through this vent where the radiator would normally be um, debris like leaves garbage papers and it was just completely full of everything pine needles papers wrappers plastic bags you name it. And the alternator, which is in the middle of the fan, the main wire had broken. So this is a 24 volt vehicle. It was running out of power. So the customer was having to charge the battery. I found one of the accelerator pumps was not squirting the way it should. And the engine was just running rough, fouling spark plugs. Part of the problem is if you look, the dual carburetors have dual carburetor linkage with these plastic, or maybe they're Bakelite connections but if you get down here I don't know if you can see that or not so when you press on the gas pedal which is here it goes through a mechanical rod which runs along here and it goes to an equalizer which is supposed to open both carburetors the same well it doesn't because they're the balls are wore out so one carburetor opens before the other every time you open a cracked throttle so you have basically a misfire you're you're starting the two rear or the two front cylinders differently than the rest it's kind of a it's too bad i don't know where to find these parts um, but anyhow their the linkage is wore out and i'm trying to make the best of what i can and i've gotten it running a lot better but i had to put in new plugs new wires clean out the carburetors multiple times figure out all their problems just from sitting around and with ethanol fuel and just that stuff. So we'll run it in a little while. I'm not going to start it up here in the shop because I've got the heat on and the doors closed and this thing stinks when you start it up. But the next thing I want to show you, and this is what's kind of kept it off the road and in my shop for a while, is look at the steering. So I'm moving the steering wheel that much before I get any play on the wheel. You notice the steering is not turning. I'm turning the steering wheel and the wheel is not turning. So if I go, um, let's, let's think of this as a 360 degree clock and I take this and I move it 90 degrees, probably. It's awful to drive down the road because you're constantly oversteering. And the reason for that is this. We're gonna get technical now. My blanket down here so I can lay down and show you. This drag link, comes from the steering box right here. You can see the play in that. So you're turning the steering wheel. It's, it's moving this drag link, which goes to a trunnion, and it moves each of the tie rod ends. It's completely wore out. Now I've got a brand new one right there. It came from Canada. It took three months because there's a lot going on in Canada with COVID and trucker convoy and all that stuff it took forever it was super expensive I had to go through customs finally got that so i've got to figure out how to get this apart and this apart which you wouldn't think would be that hard and put that new rod in there so that's what we're doing today 
Then I've got to take the brakes apart and figure out why they're wooden. They feel like you're stepping on a log. There's just no, this thing should stop a lot better. So we've got carburetor issues, we've got steering issues, and we've got brake issues. Let's get to work. We've got to fix this thing. Okay, so it's a little while later. We're working on our Pinskauer customer just dropped off a brand new car to work on, which is that little white guy right there. Took a little time to get that sorted out and in the shop. And what are we doing? Oh boy, we got our grinder out. That's never good. I cannot get anything on this. It's completely rusted. I've been trying to soak on it. I'm gonna end up cutting off that tie rod end or the drag link end, and hopefully I can hammer it out with a pickle fork and install our new our new rod, which is right there. Okay, I tried every socket that I had. It's 22 millimeter, it's been rusted down to a 21. Had to saw that off. I've gotta go back and tune up this surface here. And then I just used my pickle fork to bust off the joint at this end here. I think I can get it out now. Yep. There's the old one, and there's the new one. I have to get the thread count right, and we're gonna put that back in, and our steering should be magically, completely tight, I hope. Okay, so our fancy new steering bar is in, and I set the alignment back to the way it should be. Let's feel the steering. Oh yeah. That's a normal amount of play. Not, it had this much play in it before. Now, it's about 10 degrees or so, which is normal. Okay, let's roll this thing out. I'm gonna push it out so it doesn't stink up the shop. It tends to smoke a lot and we'll start it up and see what she sounds like. Hopefully she doesn't backfire. I've been having issues with it backfiring on starting, which is usually a misfire. Let's see how smooth she starts. I could push this big old truck out, but it actually rolls pretty easy. I gotta get in and jump on the brake though once we get out the door. Oh. oh, that steering is so much better. It's even better on center. Look at that. That's nice. Okay, let's see if this thing will start. Any dash lights? Yep. We're gonna do the choke. So this thing doesn't have choke valves. It has enrichment. In other words, fuel is allowed to go into the bores there. Uh, how do I explain that? There's this cable on the side here and it opens a, a raw fuel valve so that fuel just goes right into the bores. There's no choke plate. Let's see how easily she starts. Come on, baby, make me happy. Uh oh. Yeah. Oh, that's much better. No popping, no farting. She's cold-blooded, though. Let's try that again. on her own. Papa likes that. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's sweet. Stella, are you enjoying the sunshine? Feels like it's 75 degrees out here. What's 20 degrees this morning? That's really nice. Now I got to fix the brake lights. The front brakes, I think they're stuck. I'm going to put it back in there and then we'll go for a drive once we get everything buttoned back up. Ho, ho, ho. We're getting somewhere with this thing. Okay, so we're back in the shop. I want to put this thing on the lift, but you can't. And the reason you can't is this truck does not have a frame. It has a spine. I don't know how I'm going to do this. So how do I explain this? The center of the truck is one big long tube where all the driveline components, torque tube, everything is attached. It's pretty cool but there's nowhere to lift it. So I gotta figure out how to lift it from the spine or something. Uh, that's gonna take a 
It's gonna take a bit of work. Let's see if I can figure it out. So we're gonna take a look at our brakes on our pin scour. You'll notice the portal axles. In other words, the axles come straight out of the gear case and then they're geared lower to give you more leverage and also better climbing ability. I don't know. Um, to get the drums off, I think these are aluminum. You got to run uh, a couple pullers in like this, and this drum should just pull right off. Should just pull right off. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I used two hands here. So we got our drum off quickly. We have two blind hole wheel cylinders. Shoes seem to be adjusted okay, but I think one of these is not working. Looks like it's got new shoes on it. Those are nice. Uh, so I'm gonna step on the brake pedal and see which one doesn't work, and then we gotta exercise the one that doesn't work. Okay, you'll notice I've got my brake push bar. It's actually a shower bar that I've modified that has a screw in to make it longer. And if we walk around here to the other side of the truck, and we look at our wheel cylinders, you'll notice this one hasn't moved at all, and this one is fully out. So this wheel cylinder is seized. So what we gotta do is either take the shoe off, figure out how to exercise this piston. It's stuck, that's what I suspected. Okay, so we're a little further along on our repair here for our pin scour. You can see we've got the brake shoe off on the top, this wheel cylinder is stuck. I wanted to get you guys in here and show you a little bit. So got the hardware off, the shoes off. I know this wheel cylinder works. I saw it working. So we're going to pull off the dust boot. We're going to pull out this part of the piston. It's a two-piece piston. And the part that's stuck is that part right there. So I'm going to try to get in there with a tool. It's a pair of expandable pliers like this and see if I can loosen it up. It may be too stuck. Oh, no, it's not. I don't know why this thing's not working. So we're gonna to try to work this back and forth and see if we can exercise this and make this piston work again. I'm probably gonna do the same thing to the other one, even though it's been working, but I wanna make sure we have equal braking. Uh, we don't like it when cars or trucks pull left to right because they have stronger braking one side to the other. Okay, so we got this Passenger side drum all tightened up, put back on. One thing you would never know is these things are siliconed on. Put a little dab of silicone on there to hold it, and then the wheel rim holds it on right there. I had no idea. I don't know if that's a good idea or bad. Now we're working on the driver's side of the pin scour. I have my brake rod pushing on the brake pedal to the floor, and we've only got one wheel cylinder, this one is working so it's the opposite of the, of the passenger side this one is not working so same thing take the shoe off i think it's because it points up maybe it was sitting it tends to seize but uh, i got the other side working I'm pretty sure i can get this side working too all right so it's a bright sunny evening about 50 degrees still don't understand how the temperature can double in one day from 25 to 50 but it is what it is we've got our pinsgauer here back on its feet Brakes are unstuck, steering is fixed, carburetors are cleaned. I think we just take it for a little parking lot kind of drive here. Wouldn't that be kind of good? We need to see if these brakes will work. I just want to test it out. I've thrown the seat in. Uh, engine hood is off, so you're going to be able to hear every glorious pop and fart of this engine. I'm trying to get in here with one hand. Okay. Let's see if it even starts. Check our brakes. Uh, a little cold. There we go. I'm gonna give her a little choke because it's not idling. There we go. I'm just gonna drive in the shop and see if the brakes work. Come on. Very hesitant to take throttle. Wow, I must have really cleaned them carburetors out. There we go. Oh, 
check these brakes. Oh yeah. Front end goes down. That's nice. Here back in reverse. Where is reverse? Okay, do a little parking lot check here, in reverse, make sure the brakes work, yeah, my seat is not bolted down, I might go flying. Oh yeah, brakes are much better. Okay, we're going to let this thing warm up a little bit, and we'll just kind of get out and admire our work. The neat old rig. Super fun, but I think I'm gonna postpone the real drive until later. Until I get the hood on, I might flush the brakes, brake fluid, and uh, get the brake lights working just so we're safe. But I think we got something. So if you see me tooling around the neighborhood, be sure to give me the Pinscour wave, and or you know, flash your lights, honk if you really want to.